Hallelujah. Welcome to another episode of the Kick Out. I'm singing songs of reference, if you would understand. Uh, today, actually, today's Thursday, um, Snyder Cut of Justice League released. And actually, it wasn't a bad showing. We won't talk about that because this is not a podcast about Justice League or any comic book movies. This is a podcast about wrestling. I go by the name of Skillet. My name is Max. And we have a special guest here with us today. Somebody that I've always wanted to be part of the show for a long time now. We've always made it hard to kind of meet up. He doesn't live in London. You know, all that stuff situation has always delayed our, you know, this, this, this to happen. But, you know, with the good thing of internet today and uh, COVID breakout, <laughs> people are starting to realise that, you know, you can actually just communicate over a call like this. So we got JPR, the urban legend, uh, UK's finest. That's what I call you. Uh, <laughs> for those who don't know who JPR is, he's an independent wrestler in the UK scene. He's coming up in the scene. He's done really impressive stuff at such a short time. I'm very impressed by his set skills and his and his, and his dedication to his in-ring work. Uh, JPR, during the, the year of COVID and beforehand, can you just give us a little rundown about your career up to date with how you were progressing as a wrestler and how things might have been Started during COVID and how things are now. Yeah, I mean, I made my debut with um with a promotion called Fight Factory Wrestling in the front of about three hundred people, um, doing a rumble, um, and did pretty well. Um, a lot of people said to me, "I didn't realize that was your debut," and I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> and then um, it went, it just snowballed from there. Obviously, um, started getting work with local promotions such as um, UKW. Um, and Blackheart, Blackheart and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then COVID hit and it's just been a bit stagnant up until very recently where a few promotions have been discussing things with me, discussing where, where, where they want me to be in regards to them and their promotion. Um, it's, it's hard at the moment because at the moment you're just trying to keep fit, you're trying to keep motivated, you're watching and studying everything that you can get hold of whether it be you know japanese death matches that inspired the the aew match at revolution whether it be you know picking up things little small intricate things from people you know that that you look up to um and it's just been an absolute journey obviously everybody everybody's had like different trials and tribulations during the pandemic I guess for us, for us independent wrestlers, for us people that are not on the the scene um, in regards to the WWE, it's just been difficult to, to maintain, you know, the desire um, and everything in between, you know, trying to keep yourself motivated and not just be quiet and, and not accept that, you know, what you're doing now in regards to your social media and things like that mm. is still on point. Um, and it, but at times it, it has been a struggle. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie to you guys at all. Yeah, no, I can imagine that. Um, you know, um, we had Roy Johnson, who you're a good friend of, a really close friend of, uh, we had him on the Absolutely. show a couple of weeks back and he was telling us how much he struggled. So I can only imagine how hard it must be for a lot of wrestlers in, in general, not just in the UK, but in, in general mm-hmm. who, are, who are in the, in the independent scene and a lot of shows where the independent scenes kind of strive of live shows, you know, like people mm-hmm. t- turning up at these events are struggling right now. Um, but, you know, I always feel there's a light in the tunnel, JPR. Let's keep doing what you're doing, bro. And um, I'm sure there's Thank something out of it. But um, let's talk about you getting into wrestling as a, as a young man, being a fan growing up before you became a wrestler itself, like who were, what inspired you to become a wrestling fan? Who were the guys you loved watching? Talk, talk to us. Let, let us know, man. Yeah, uh, I'm more than happy to. In regards to that, obviously, I think I'm this, around about the same age as, as yourself. Um, obviously, the same age as Roy Johnson. So looking back, um, my journey in regards to a fan was different to most people's. Um, obviously, I watched Nitro as a child. Um, on the old Cartoon Network with the cable box. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, same here, man. TNT, you know, TNT waiting, days. For, waiting for Cartoon Network to be done. So, you, so <laughs> yeah, TNT, just, yeah. As soon as, as soon as it turned nine o'clock, it went straight into TNT. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there, was, there was no ad break. There was no ad break either. Nothing. Yeah. Do you remember, do you remember um, Jay? Do you remember when you used to see the the, the traffic lights and Lex Luger was flexing in the building and the explosion? <laughs> Good times, man. 
Good times. And that's that's what set me off. Obviously, you know, as a young child, you know, you look at things like pyrotechnics and that you're thinking, oh, Jesus Christ, this is, you know, this is what I want to watch as a youth. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and then it got a bit more serious come 1998, 99. Um, obviously, I heard of tape traders and stuff like that as a young teenager and delved into like ECW. And from it was from then when I watched people like Rob Van Dam, Jerry Lynn, uh, Mike Awesome, Bulls Mahoney and people like that, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, this 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 is a bit of me. And if you ask anybody from St. Tommy Moore, you know, what was Justin going to be? They'll say a wrestler. You know, I was yeah. prattling around doing DDTs on benches, you know, 3Ds on concrete. People were mad in school, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like sharpshooters in the middle of you know lunchtime, <laughs> we had Royal Rumbles in the the science corridors. God knows how you would have won that, but you know at the end of the day, it was just everything was there in our school, and it laid out all the foundations because you know if as you guys know, if you scrap for about a minute, you're knackered. Yes. So you know you <laughs> yeah, you knackered. Even if you're wrestling a pillow. <laughs> yeah. even, even if you're doing moves on a pillow or, or a teddy bear, you're still tired. You're tired. Yeah. You're within, within you're absolutely knackered. <laughs> <laughs> so that obviously, you know, that was an eye opener in itself because if these guys are carrying 10, 12, 15 minute matches, if not longer, you're thinking to yourself, you know, you, you got to get yourself into relatively good shape. Um, so obviously, when I left school, um, that's what I kind of focused on. Um, but yeah, that, that was my journey. Obviously I watched what everybody else watched as well in regards to Raw, SmackDown, obviously, you know, you, you watch the first SmackDown and you hear that music again, you knew what time it was. Um, so, people so, like, sorry to cut you off there, Justin. Yeah. Because like, you said, so you said, so you, so how you been, have you been training to be a wrestler from a young age? I no. No, I didn't think Absolutely so. Absolutely yeah. not. <laughs> I didn't think so. Because I seen when we, because I knew, I knew, I knew of you before, right? But when we yeah. finally met at the UK tournament, I met you at the yeah. UK tournament. We saw Roy Johnson live at um, Blackpool. Uh, yeah. I assumed it was then when you were starting to train as a wrestler. Well, am I right about it? Was that? around. It was about. It was around about then. So obviously, mm -hmm. what had happened was, is I went to the odds, um, the odd, the odd training session in. Um, the London School of Lucha Libre, um, the old Projo I went to, but I never could sustain it because of work. Um, it was only when I had a conversation with Roy and said to Roy, look, how are you doing? How are you getting along? Um, and we, we, we broke bread. We, we spoke to each other at great length. And at this moment in time, because of um, an injury to my ACL where I had to have it reconstructed, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm not. Uh, you know. I'm not. I'm not focused on it. I've. I've moved up to Hull, um, and I just. That was the last thing on my mind to be a wrestler, and then I had a like a deep conversation with him, and uh, it inspired me because obviously I'm. I'm seeing him making such fast strides in such a short space of time. Definitely looking at his training videos and that, and I'm thinking to myself, you know what. Maybe I will give it one more shot. And from then, from when I saw you in Blackpool, that's when the, the small world came. Because I'm thinking, there's my guy in the WWE ring. Mm. What's yeah. stopping me, you know, maybe not achieving that standard, but what's stopping me from not entertaining, you know, people in, in, in halls all across the country and, and stuff and make, like that. And making, if, a, and, and making a living out of it. And making a living out of absolutely, it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and to see him progress, no pun intended, how he's progressed <laughs> is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. It, it's yeah. it's needed. It was needed in the scene. It was needed for for people like us, if obviously mm. that makes sense. No, it does. Um, so, yeah, it was just an inspiration seeing him against Pete Dunne. Um, in, in the tournament and me watching my friend in the flesh that I met in Miami um, the same week that he met, you know, your good friend, DJ Ace. It's, mm -hmm. it's mad. Yeah. That's yeah. the way the world works, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that was interesting because um, 
Alice went straight up to, well, it's funny, Alice went straight up to his mum. I don't know, I don't know if, I don't know if Roy and I spoke before that tournament. I can't remember. Right. But I just remember seeing his mum and his sister supporting him. Yeah. And I just went straight up to them. I was like, yo, you should be very proud of your son. Your son smashed yeah. it. Blah, blah, blah. And I think, yeah, we were all invited backstage. Ace and I were invited backstage. We had to interview um, the wrestlers like Tyler Bay and Pete Dunne and whatnot. Yeah. And Mark Andrews. And then, um, yeah, Roy was there. And I just, I think I just went up to him. And I think we just, and Roy, you know, you know, Roy, Roy is such a cool guy. And you could just yeah. talk to him and he's, he's approachable. And, and I think since yeah. then, we've become really, really good friends. And then obviously, then you came up to me and you're like, yeah, yeah what's going on? I don't even know. Did you, did you know about the Kick Out podcast then? Did you know? I about didn't it? at the time. No, I didn't no. know. I didn't know at the time. Okay. Obviously, you know, the, the, the progress that you guys have made as well. It's again phenomenal. And it's an inspiration yeah. to, Everybody, you know, you know, ev literally everybody that you guys have done yeah. what you've done again in a relatively short space of time. It's mad. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that, man. We, we, we're going to keep trying. We got my man Mex here, who's now part of the family, and he's he's pushing us every day to be better. So, you know, people Good man. Like, Good man. we've only got Go ourselves, we only have ourselves. And it's so refreshing to hear, you know, the, the whole fact of you, you nearly stopped. But you know, you, yeah. again, you saw you had that glimmer of hope, that inspiration, and um, continued pushing through, and, and that's what it's about, man. Sometimes we are in the way of ourselves. One hundred percent. And I don't think. Sometimes. And I don't think you. It's. I think you kind of underestimate how that your ACL. That's a serious injury. You know, you you mm. really, you know you, and that's that's something that will mess with your psyche. Like you know, even mm -hmm. like. You know, what I mean, anyone, anyone's psyche. So the fact that you're willing to go back in there and try again, bro, commend you, bro. And I think I can only see good things coming from it. So keep going. Thank up. you. Keep going from it. Thank you. Um, Max, should we talk about some uh, world of wrestling today? We got the news announced that Eric Bischoff is now finally inducted to the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, he's, back. I, he's back. He's, he's back. back. You can't sing the song. Um, <laughs> he is back. <laughs> He's um, better than ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, but it, it's, I think it was quite ludicrous. I think I tweeted this last year when they announced the NWO being inducted. I, I said it was ludicrous that you could announce Hogan, Paul, Nash, X Park, and not have, I mean, well, Six Park, mm. I should say, and not have Bischoff part of that, uh, you know, that faction of, of NWO because Bischoff, he changed the game, man. He changed, listen, absolutely. Listen, Love him or hate him, he changed the game. You know, I, I don't think WWE was doing any pyro before Bischoff um, no. stormed, stormed the scene with WCW. I don't think WWE did any pyro before that. There was no heel general manager before Bischoff. Uh, you talk about, you know, someone who finally challenged WWE and, and actually beat them consistently for 83 weeks in a row. Like, that's history in the making stuff there, man. That's like, mad. Like, and that's before he became a WWE legend. Like, that's all... Yeah legend prior him joining WWE. I remember I remember I was in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh uh I was at my cousin's and uh, my cousin said oh, if you guys want to watch some cable put on some cable TV this is 2002 right so me, me, me my brother and I wasn't heavy on internet back then like I used to go on MSN I believe I didn't was MSN even a thing then I can't remember I think it, probably yeah, it was it was, was you know yeah, it I think it might be like that might be my my only thing was like MSN and little Napster downloads you get me like I wasn't I wasn't <laughs> on social media like that so I didn't really follow up on the dirt, dirt, dirt sheets the only dirt sheets I was follow up on was like magazines like Power Slam and stuff like that but even then I don't think they mentioned Bishop coming to WWE the, but the, to be fair there might have been rumors to be fair but I think I was, I was in a mindset of I ain't gonna that ain't gonna happen. And mm. I just remember like watching Monday Night Raw in Trinidad and I Bischoff coming out and Vince giving him that hug on, on Monday Night Raw. <laughs> Big <laughs> ass hug, bro. Me and my brother was like, what are you? We were, we were so shocked, bro. We were so shocked. But yeah, I mean, that's, that shows the mentality of Vince as well, like business before anything. Um, but yeah, before Bishop became a WWE Hall of Famer, he was definitely a Hall of Famer in his own right in, in WCW. Let's go to Justin first. Justin, you said that you are a massive fan of WCW growing up. Do you agree with me? Bischoff deserves 100% to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, absolutely. As you said, he's an absolute game changer in regards to pro wrestling as a whole. Um, he, I, I wouldn't say he nicked any ideas from Paul Heyman and ECW. However, he might have took what they'd done and obviously oh, put it I, on a I, national... I, he took what they'd done and he took what NJPW done when they had yeah. their own international clash. The, the NWO yeah. storyline was inspired yeah. by NJPW as well. But yeah, you're right. But then you, yeah. you have the balls to put that on TNT and you have the balls to, you know, run with it and keep running with it at the, maybe at the detriment of, you know, 
making WCW seem inferior, but by God, was it great television. And man, he's the, master, just... the, mastermind, the mastermind behind the Hogan new turn, where everybody yeah. said, you know, Vince never thought of ever doing that. Never thought that's 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 good business. Bishop made that yeah. the business. That was the business. Yeah. That so, was the business. And yeah. then obviously, you know, it all spiraled from there. You see people like Six Pack, Ted DiBiase joined the Outsiders. Yeah. Joined. That was that was mad to the fact where Vince thought he could combat it by making a fake Diesel mm -hmm. and a fake Razor Ramon. And that just, it flopped. Let's be honest, it flopped. Yeah, 100%. 100%. But, the thing is, when you when you have the balls to make, you know, a brand that, you know, is synonymous with TNT second best for the NWO, that's a ballsy manoeuvre and it absolutely worked, as you said, for 83 weeks strong. Um, there was side there was side dishes to that, let's say. The emergence of DDP would have never have happened if it wasn't for the NWO. Hey, hey, I, I ended up um, yeah. the bishop, the bishop yeah. and DDP were like next door neighbors, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, that's, um, how became, yeah. that's it. And and how it ran in regards to DDP, it was a slow build. Will he, won't he join the NWO? And that lasted for months, yeah. Um, and then obviously, you had the again the slow build of Crow Sting, the best. Um, I, think the best I think the yeah. best, I think, yeah, one of the best storylines wrestling's ever produced. Um, but the fact that you had one of your biggest stars not wrestling for, I dare say, I think it was a couple of years, mm. and then all of a sudden he's the one that avenges WCW against the NWO. Genius. Class. Yeah. Absolute genius. So in regards to Bischoff, you know, for for what he done in, in that in that era alone, as you've already mentioned, it's absolutely phenomenal. It made complete sense for him to do what he done, and he did it perfectly executed, if that makes sense. And I feel Bishop gets a lot of slack because obviously after that great booking you just talked about the year prior, there was still some great booking because you had the likes of Goldberg emerging and, you know, that Goldberg undefeated streak. That's still great streak. booking. But it started to wane from 98 onwards. Mm. You know, had the NWO divided, the black and red and the, the black mm. and white. Red. Oh, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. I do apologise. Uh, <laughs> I That is my cousin calling on the random one. Um, <laughs> I'm going to put that on mute. <laughs> and, uh, call her, and call her back. Um, <laughs> the reason why this is funny uh, is because this happens to me all the time. So uh, <laughs> you wait till you're recording. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I need to really put my stuff on me. Anyway, um, yeah, um, but people were like NWO started to decline a bit, but people don't realize the flip side of that was Ted Turner put a lot of pressure on Bischoff to stop mm. producing thunder. And you know, Bischoff at that time, you know, he's only one man. There wasn't, you know, what I mean, there wasn't a much of a creative team to do two shows. Mm. It did, it did work for for a hot minute, but then it obviously that wasn't going to sustain itself, you know. So, uh, but yeah, no respect to Eric Bischoff, rightfully so. Um, Max, you have any, any words about your favorite Bischoff moments? I think for me, going back to my childhood, one of the most effective and my favorite was the announcement of the Elimination Chamber. Um, that was just, it's just greasy. Like by the time they brought that out and you know how he used to explain it, the amount of steel being used and the amount of chain mm. link that's in the, in the elimination chamber, um, just a complete, like it started off very nice. Like the elimination chamber now looks like a jungle gym as far as I'm concerned, but yeah, um, yeah, it was, it was special. It was, special, it was, man. it was, but yeah, he's, he's, you know what? Like low key, he was one of my early, like, guys like one of my early idols Ooh. just for like what he did and like you said yeah it, it became like a collapse and just became a whole big mess you know in wcw but then yeah when he came over to wwe it was like a new lease of life like and obviously because how wwe is a bit more rigid yeah. i think mm. it, it it worked kind of seeing him work in another kind of setting um yeah. and what he could do in that sort of thing uh, i i really enjoyed him for sure. Um, it, it, there's not much wrestling news apart from that. I think that's, that was the big scoop, I guess. The sure. WrestleMania tickets, like we said, they're finally on sale. Yeah, yeah, WrestleMania now. Pre, yeah, pre, I think the pre sale tickets came out today and I yeah. think they're on sale tomorrow officially. WrestleMania 37. Uh, before we talk about NXT and AEW, JPR, are you excited for WrestleMania? And are you excited about the build going towards WrestleMania at the moment? 
I mean, the the answer similar to that answer that's yes. Um, you know, you, you're hearing pre-sale tickets. You're hearing tickets um, for fans might eclipse forty five thousand people to see WWE with fans again. That's you know, as weird as it would sound. Two years ago, oh, you know, none of us would ever say this, but to have fans back at wrestling events in regards to you know, like AEW did it in regards to Revolution. Now WWE are doing it with WrestleMania. I'm excited for that because, you know, you, you kind of live those events if you're not there through the eyes of a crowd member, but obviously yeah. at home. Yeah. And it's like, how are people going to react to, you know, people like the Hurt Business? How are people going to react to people like Seamus, Drew McIntyre? We know what we're seeing on TV, but because there's no crowd, it's obviously a bit different. You kind of make up who's a good guy, who's a bad guy type of thing. But in regards to WrestleMania itself at this moment in time, I can't watch it live because work have not allowed me to have the two days off, which I'm very pissed off about. Um, <laughs> I'm trying my best to get, obviously, the the time you know to watch it because I do want to see it. I do want to see um, WrestleMania. I think the build, um, especially to people, certain people like Sasha Banks, um, and Bianca, Bianca Belair, for example, yep. Yep. For, for in regards to that, I'm hella excited to see that match. Um, there's a few other matches on the card thus far that I know about um, that I'm excited to see. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's a great time to be a wrestling fan. This time from the Royal Rumble to WrestleMania always excites me, always invigorates me, mm. always makes me want to watch Raw SmackDown. Um, and even NXT, this is just for me to see, oh yeah, this is what's going on. And obviously, you know, Edge versus Roman Reigns as well, Spear versus Spear. I'm hella excited for that as well. So this is the first WrestleMania in a, in a few years that I've actually said to myself, right, let's watch it from the Royal Rumble. Let's watch the build up and let's see where it goes. And as every year I say it to people that moan about the product, just enjoy the ride. Because if you have that mindset, you are just going to, you know, enjoy the ride, so to speak. Yeah. So, yeah, long story short, I'm, I'm pretty damn excited. Oh, wicked, wicked. Um, let's talk about NXT first, Max. Uh, if you could remind me how that show started off with, am I right in thinking it was Adam Cole? Um, was Finn it, Balor. it was Finn. It was Finn. It was Finn, yeah. So Finn Balor basically came out and he said, you know, He's beaten Pete Dunne, beaten Kyle O'Reilly, beaten Adam Cole. That, um, what's his name? Karrion Cross is next. And um, yeah, Karrion Cross then came out and basically, you know, his whole stick of TikTok times running out. Scarlett Bordeaux, his, his wife and his um, valet, um, basically said that um, there's going to be, she can see a vision of them yeah. both walking into... Um, stand and deliver, which is the two night takeover, um, with gold, and she basically coerced um, only Lorkin and Danny Birch, the tag team champions, to giving them a tag team title match like on the night. And this actually frightened me because very much how the main roster have been doing involving champions in the tag team division and stuff for men and women, I thought this is exactly what they're going to do here, they're going to slap the tag belts mm -hmm. on Karrion Cross and Finn Balor. And um, yeah, they're going to be tag team guys, and it's the whole you know, oh, can they coexist? And they've still got to go against each other. Um, thank God they didn't win at the, <laughs> the end of the night, but um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's how the night kicked off. You know, I'm very impressed by um, Scarlett Bordeaux and Karrion Cross in terms of their mic skills, and you don't really see uh, some you do it sometimes, but majority of time with wrestlers, you don't always see a, a wrestler and a valet who are both good on the mic. Do you get what I mean? The reason why they always someone needs a manager is because that wrestler probably isn't really good on the mic and the manager yeah. needs to be the, the mouthpiece. But it's good to see that they both are really good on the mic. And um, I think they both are going to be... Oh, I've always said this about Karrion. I said this from Karrion from years ago. I think he's going to be a major star in WWE. But I think every time I see them in on the screen, I, I, just, I think about it all the time. So yes, I think both of them are going to be major stars, major players. You think oh. he's um quantum leaping straight to the main roster after stand and deliver? I think so. I think so. I think he's I think he's getting that raw after mania debut. Yeah. I don't think I don't I don't think he's gonna win the NXT title. Yeah, I mean even he, if he, he does, he, he might still show up. You never know. 
That's true. He won it before, obviously dropped it straight after because he injured his shoulder in the match. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think he's destined for the main roster. We might as well talk about, because since we talk about them right now, let's talk about them in the terms of the main event. So they had a match, tag team match for the tag team titles between Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch. Danny Birch, oh, Danny Birch, by the way, was quite good on the mic. I've never really seen him. Speak. Danny Birch, Danny Birch is, I, I, I love, I love Danny. It's <laughs> really good. Yeah, he's really good on the mic. The proper yeah. geezer, mate. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I, I, like, I never know, I don't think I ever noticed his mic skills before. Phenomenal wrestler. I, just, I don't There's... think I ever noticed him as a mic man. When um when I was when I was younger, he used to wrestle in um, a promotion called the FWA. Yes. And in regards to that, um, he was he was really good on the mic. Then obviously he got a break with Progress as well and cut a few promos in Progress. Obviously, this was again when I was a fan, um, and again living in London. Um, and he he had us engaged in regards to what he was saying, the delivery of how he was saying it. Um, they condensed the tone and he was on the mic for a good 10 minutes and you know usually <laughs> after 10 minutes you're, you're blowing like yeah. <laughs> you're blowing if you're if you're t if you're talking for 10 minutes straight you kind of start to waffle but with yeah. him it was it was it was good he, he held the crowd and that's a hard crowd to hold when it, it was the electric ballroom in front of 700 strong if that makes sense so now he's he's always been like fire on the mic so to speak He's never really had a chance to show in NXT until this last six months where he's been this heel character rolling with Pete Dunn, Pat McAfee and mm. stuff like that. And he mm. is just absolutely flourishing. Like, mm. it's, it's good. Yeah, you know, you know, one of them ones, especially like the minute he takes on a mic, he's like, oh, you remember he he's a he's a British boy like all of us. And mm. it's like all the lingo and stuff comes out, the Cockney slang. And it's like, you're literally listening to one of your own. Like, mm. So obviously, with these four competitors, it's going to be very technical, very hard hitting. I I remember the end of this match. I think Bala went to do the coup de gras outside, well, the running coup de gras. You know the one where he's the standing the, one, the, yeah, the, the, the drop kick. kick. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he went to get tried to get Oni Lorcan, I think, but he moved out the way and he he got Scarlet. He, he got Oni Lorcan, but Oni Lorcan then fell back into Scarlet. Oh, that's right, that's right. And Scarlet yeah. fell out, and then. How did it end? Carry, How... Carry and Cross then just battered Finn Balor because obviously yeah. he knocked over his misses. <laughs> yeah. um, rolled him back into the ring. Only Lorcan hit him with like a European uppercut and then pinned him. Um, right. So, yeah. And then obviously they were, tried, they were squaring up to each other at the end. Scarlett tried to act like she wanted to have a truce, but then she told Carrie. Yeah, to she set him up basically. Yeah. Gave him a forearm to the back of the head. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the return of Jordan Devlin. Yeah, really big segment. He said last week that he's coming to NXT to stop the foolishness of all this two <laughs> cruiserweight championships being carried around between obviously him um, and Escobar, Santos Escobar. And um, he came. There was no attack at, at first. So Escobar was outside the ring. Uh, Devlin was inside the ring. Eventually, Escobar got inside the ring and said, look, let's, let's all stop the foolishness. Like I say, let's put this, you know, on the on the line at stand and deliver the two night takeover the winner takes home and like i guess the undisputed cruiserweight champion or whatever the case is um devlin gave him a headbutt and escaped from the ring um escobar started bleeding from the mouth i don't know if that was genuine or not but um yeah devlin versus escobar is going to be a brilliant brilliant match yeah two ring generals it's gonna be very exciting to see um so, you know, the, the takeover towards Mania is looking, shaping up really nice, actually, when mm. I think about it. Uh, so I guess, what do you think? You, you think you'll do the ladder match? You know, two two cruiserweight titles? They should. Show mm. sure they they should. Thing. <laughs> when they were having the promo, I was definitely saying to myself, this should be a ladder match. But, um, yeah, it might be. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a ladder match. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, um, that would be good. Um, women's. Who am I missing for? The, oh, um, didn't... Um, didn't Dakota Kai wrestle someone? Dakota Kai had a match with Zoe Stark, um, one of the new recruits to NXT. She's been having really good matches. Had a match at Io Shirai a couple of weeks ago. Um, Dakota Kai won in the end. Um, and when Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez were going to lay an attack on Zoe Stark, you saw Io Shirai come out. And Io Shirai came out with a contract in hand and basically just went straight to Raquel Gonzalez and just put it in her hand and like, I want you awesome. sort of thing, sign it. Um, and she helped Zoe Stark out the ring and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, I think Raquel Gonzalez is going to sign it. And that's going to be... Lo I'm loving the fact that Io Shirai is the one that is 
coming for her. You know, she's it, the it's champion. It's the first time they've done this within her story since she's been champion. Obviously, there's been a lot of people gunning for her sort of thing. And mm -hmm. like I was saying, I think last week, it's just refreshing to see a baby face be the one that's, you know, trying to get things done, not always on the other end of the stick and being the victim. So, um, yeah, like you're saying, really good. Uh, Imperium showed up. I think Walter and Imperium, they had a match with... Um, yeah, so... It was, it was um Champa versus yeah. Martel Bar, Bar Marcel Bartel. Yeah. Um and I think the match was I can't remember if the match was finished or, or not, but um we saw Walter come out and uh, Champ has been calling out Walter for the past two weeks. Um and obviously once the music hits and you just see, see that figure in the shadow, it's like <laughs> oh, crazy, crazy stuff, man. Oh, I'm such a Water fan. Um, yeah, Water came down, basically commanded the boys to attack Champa. Champa tried to like, fight out of it. Water just gave him one nasty chop across his chest. He dropped to the ground. He got beaten up. Um, the whole point here is they're trying to take Timothy Thatcher away from um, Champa to like join Imperium. Obviously, he's got history with them, like, back in WXW, I think it was. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's that's the whole story arc here. I think maybe we're going to get Champa versus Walter at the takeover, for maybe for the UK Championship, who knows? Oh, Walter versus Champa? You don't mind it, bro. Ooh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I that's never, good. I, that, yeah, I would love to see that. That'd be a yeah. good match. Okay. Um, Austin Ferry. He had a match against um, what's Dexter Dumas? Loomis. Dumas? Loomis, 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 Dexter Loomis. So, yeah, he was um, basically trying to get rid of Dexter Loomis out of his head. Dexter Loomis kidnapped him a couple of weeks ago. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Austin Theories looks really impressive. Obviously, he was someone that was called up to the main roster pretty early. Um, you know, there was that all this kind of stuff around speaking out, this, that, and the other. He got taken off TV, kind of demoted back to NXT. And he's really found himself again with um, Johnny Gargano, the whole The Way family stuff that they're doing. And he, he's almost become a bit of a comedy character, but he he's still doing great stuff. Um, this match of Loomis was, it was pretty much standard stuff, just a good showcase for um, Austin Theory as a young up-and-comer. But um, Loomis got the win in the end. So, yeah. uh, let's should we talk about Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. Um, I yeah, feel, man. in my personal opinion, because it's like you said, Max, NXT is gonna be a two night, all right? Yeah, just like mm. is. Yes, I think Cole and Kyle O'Reilly needs to go last on the second night. <laughs> I know, I know it's not for any NXT titles, I know it's not for an NXT. I know traditionally you gotta go for the championship as the last match, but if you talk about the best match that's gonna be produced that night, that weekend. It's going to be Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. It's and, definitely um, going to be the most meaningful, like, long-term story. This, they, them boys are going to, they're and, going to and, tear yeah. down that house, bro. The history and they felt, have. Everything. I think they should save that for the last match. But I digress. I'm enjoying this feud. Uh, there was a bit of a confrontation outdoors. I know there was, like, a promo indoors, and Kyle O'Reilly yeah. was on a, on a computer screen. He said he couldn't be there. Because yeah, so Adam Cole, yeah. Adam Cole basically was calling him out. Adam Cole's now wearing his new merch, which looks very Undisputed Era-ish, but obviously Undisputed yeah. Era is no more. They're doing the um, Roman Reigns thing with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he'll so... probably keep the theme song, right? He'll probably keep the, the Undisputed theme, and the, and the other guys are going to get new theme Have to change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but well, I guess well, I guess that will all be kind of debuted at this, at this takeover, so we'll wait and see. But um, yeah. He was having a promo. Um, William Regal came out and said that, you know, Kyle O'Reilly's not, he wasn't fit to return last week when he came and attacked you. So he's not here this week when you're calling him out. Kyle O'Reilly then appeared on the Titron and said that, you know, wherever he, it takes him to go to get his hands on Adam Cole, he's going to go. Even if it means he goes to Adam Cole's yard, he's going to catch him and all that, that kind of stuff. Um, Adam Cole said, okay, he's going to be the aggressor sort of thing. And he's going to go and find Kyle O'Reilly first. And it don't seem like he got too far <laughs> because as he left the <laughs> performance center, um, people were rushing William Regal. Oh, you got to come outside, you got to come outside. And basically Kyle O'Reilly must have been waiting outside the performance center and try to run him off the road. Police was there, everything. The two cars like, <laughs> had crashed and everything. So um, they, had, they were both arrested and put in two different cars. Um, so yeah, a lot of uh, bad blood building towards this one. I got a question for Justin here. Um, you yeah. know, know, you, are you a first and foremost? Are you a fan of the Undisputed Era? Are you happy to see them split? And do you think that they're just 
in my opinion, they I think they might be split up for now. I think they're gonna have a little bit of a blood feud for now, a little rivalry for now. We don't have Bobby Fish in the picture at the moment. I think Bobby Fish, when he returns, could be the guy that brings them back together. But mm. hopefully back together on the main roster. What's your thoughts? I mean, it's, you know, first things first, yes, I am a fan, um, especially of Adam Cole. Um, going back, you know, to a few years ago when I was watching Adam Cole in Ring of Honor with the Bullet Club Absolutely. in PWG. Do you know what I mean? It's The guy's a star. Um, he's an absolute star. He's got the look. He's got the charisma. He's obviously got the move set as well. Um, but that's not this. That's not you know taking anything away from people like um, Kyle O'Reilly, um, especially Roderick Strong as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Roderick Strong in Ring of Honor, by God, he was phenomenal. Absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. phenomenal. Um, so in regards to being a fan of the Undisputed Era, absolutely I was. The way they run Rough Shot of NXT. For you know, a, and, a wow, and, a long and, wow, and their matches used to always steal the show. Like that, like yeah. even when they would do tag matches, their tag matches would be like arguably the best. Yeah. Match yeah. They would always bang whatever they done. They they bang that. They they bang the promos. They bang the matches. So everybody thought, oh yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it's inevitable that we're gonna see them again run rough shot in the main roster. Now obviously they've split up. Um, and they're feuding at the moment. As you said, it's a great theory about Bobby Fish. If it happens, and if it happens, I don't know, the day the day after rest. I think, are they going to pull the trigger on the main roster in, regard to the, in regards to the Undisputed Era when the fans come back? Maybe. And if that yeah. happens, the, the roof will blow off. Yeah, Do you know what I mean. It's yeah, and and you know Vince and the booking team are very savvy in regards to you know crowd reactions because that's what wrestling is all about. It's all about moments. It's all about feuds. It's all yeah. about you know. I, I've always I've always said on especially Twitter where dream matches are fine, but in regards to a feud, you want your feuds to be protracted. You want your feuds to have emotion. You want your feuds to you know be hit you in the heart so to speak so obviously with the honest year they were splitting up yeah it's hit us all in the heart will they come back together i damn well hope so um because so you know they've got, yeah they've got a lot of unfinished business in the, on the main roster there's a lot of feuds that can be you know started dug up you know there's a lot of people on the roster at the moment that they've wrestled in the past um maybe not in the wwe but in the past and in the independent scene that people want to see. So hopefully, hopefully they, you know, they, they, they come back together on the main roster. It just makes sense to me. Yeah. What do you guys think that, you know, because at the same time where I, I would love to see them on the main roster, I'm thinking that because of the, just the size of, you know, the characters and the faction that has basically become NXT in the last three years. Um, obviously, Adam Cole's just a massive star. They've recently kind of shot Kyle O'Reilly to the same, you know, a similar kind of star power with this particular feud and stuff. Do you think they can't move Undisputed Era just because of the hole it would leave in NXT? Possibly. Definitely, I feel. I feel like, uh, yeah, I think that's a good shout, Mix, because um, you know, I'm some. They're a, they're a third brand now. They're a now, third brand against AEW. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they are a third brand, um, and I've been a fan of NXT from day dot. Mm-hmm. And mm. and if you told me how much NXT I watched in 2020 and 2021, it hasn't been a lot. So it shows no. that there's some, there's, there's, it shows that there's something missing already. And you are right. The fact that if they do lose Undisputed Era, that could be a massive, massive hole. So they might be there for the foreseeable future still. It might take a little while. Hopefully, maybe if fans are backing by SummerSlam, mm. it might be comfortable enough to give. I think I think AEW showing up has kind of hurt WWE in the sense of booking talent as well. But you know what? This acquiring it's talent. All, it's all WWE's doing. Do it. Because it is. A- AEW said we're going on Wednesday nights and then WWE moved to Wednesday nights. Yeah. Now, mm. I'm, I'm hoping when I think after after WrestleMania they're moving to Tuesday nights. Um mm. I'm ho- I'm hoping that that kind of reinvigorates the essence of NXT, brings it back to developmental. We're still seeing new guys and it gets back to its original meaning and it's not kind of feeling like it has to compete with anything. 
Yeah. Um, I know Im- Impact plays that night, but uh, hopefully, uh, like I say, they don't they don't take that into effect and they just concentrate on their own product. Before we talk about AEW, did that Impact match happen yet between Ritz Swan and Kenny? No, it's next not month. yet. It's not next yet. Week. Next month. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that Ritz Swan match with Moose. I think that was a mm. brilliant. Yeah, was outstanding. Good. Good. Moose is another one I'm surprised hasn't gone either AEW or NXT or anything. Apparently, like his contract is coming up. Mm-hmm. I think I think someone said June. Interesting. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about some AEW now. Uh, AEW Dynamite. I actually didn't see a lot of this. I did see the main event, and I did watch the the new faction promo, which we'll talk about. And I love their new name. Um, Max, please talk me through what actually happened this week in Dynamite. So the opening match was the um, fallout from the little skits we kind of got from last week between Cody and Penta. They had yeah. a really good match to open the show. Um, unfortunate that Penta didn't win. I think he should have won, especially how the match was being played out. Um, Cody was wrestling with one arm, basically. Um, but... You know, I've I've said this to a lot of people. Cody, I think, is Triple H. Like he's Triple H diet. A lot of people, you know, say that uh, Triple H is very egotistical. This, that, and the other. I'm a big Triple H fan, and I don't see any difference between how you know Triple H puts himself over and how Cody does the exact same thing. Like, mm. but I don't know. I think because Cody has you know blonde hair that he gets away with it. And, he also uh, gets away because he, he also gets away because he hasn't won any. He hasn't won any AEW title yet, apart from the TNT yeah. title. He hasn't, he hasn't won. won one. He hasn't won the big one yet. That's why he's getting away with it. But yeah, yeah, I, I see your point though. I do see your point. Yeah, because I do. Yeah, I, I, I hope this feud between him and Penta continues. Penta is just a bag full of charisma. He's so good, yeah. obviously in the ring as well. Um, so hopefully this continues. This isn't just a one and done. But it looks like a bigger story is being told here with like the Nightmare Family kind of falling apart. QT Marshall is is just missing in action when people are getting beaten <laughs> up he just comes out last minute like, <laughs> he walked so, away last week as well didn't he yeah, on dynamite yeah. I, I think it's building up to a big major cody hilton it's building cody up hilton that. yeah i think it is okay. i think it is yeah for okay. sure i think i think more maybe mjf is going to get in um qt's ear and that might lead to something again between mjf and cody um not necessarily QT joining the new group, but yeah. Um, so yeah, that was the opening match. Um, next up, I think the next match we got was Jade Cargill. She was in a match against um, Danny Jordan, who's had a couple of matches on um, Dark. Just, just you know, spotlight match to put over Jade Cargill. She looked great in this match. Done a German suplex where she nearly threw Danny Jordan out of the ring. Um, wow. That's how strong she is. Um, yeah. And won in the end with a glam slam. I think it was literally about four moves. And her flexing and posing and you know get, get, getting heat in between. She she looked like the star. Like they 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 look like she looks like someone that they don't need to wait a lot of time before they put the belt on her, and it's very yeah. believable. I agree, totally. Agree. So yeah, she she's she's a, a nice upward trajectory. After the match, she went outside a bit of jaw jacking with Red Velvet, who was watching um, from behind the barricade. So they're kind of continuing their thing. Good. Um, Next up, we had MJF introducing his new group, the Pinnacle. Um, t- t- what's his name? Tully, 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 Tully Blanchett. Blanchett. <laughs> great, promo, great promo by Tully Blanchett. Like, he yeah, still Tully hasn't, yeah, yeah, he hasn't he skipped the beat. Like, he was a great talk in the Horseman days. Like, obviously, a lot mm. of Rick Flair was the man. There's not, it's no two ways about it. Rick Flair was the man. Rick Flair was, he was wrestling, you know. What I mean, you know, you had Hogan, you had Flair. That was that was the two, but. Blanchard, like, there's not like Blanchard and, and, and on Anderson, even Oli. Oli, I don't like Oli, but even Oli could cut a little bit of a promo. But mm. all, all four of them were very good on the mic. And um, yeah, it's good to see Blanchard now having that kind of Ric Flair position with yeah, the pinnacle yeah, yeah. and him talk, yeah, and talking more and stuff. So it's, yeah, it's, um, I'm happy to see this. Yeah. And I think it's a great name, the pinnacle. I mean, it's a fantastic mm, name. Yeah. And um, you know what? They've, they've actually individually, because obviously FTR have had this, um, affiliation with Tully um MGF has what has been on and off on screen friends with Sean Spears and individually yeah. since about May last year they've been calling themselves the pinnacle right okay. like FTR have said we're the pinnacle of the tag team division and Sean Spears been calling himself the pinnacle so AEW and their long-term storytelling again I guess very good um, no, but yeah, 
Yeah, Tully came in, started the promo off saying that, you know, he was part of the one of the greatest stables um, and he wants to now finish his career in one of the greatest stables, being the pinnacle. Um, MGF took to the mm. mic and, you know what, this, this reminded me a lot of when Evolution was formed and Triple mm. H putting over everyone in Evolution, how uh, Randy Orton, he's going to be the next big thing, all of that kind of stuff. And MJF was doing the exact same thing. And then he came to himself and said, you know, look at me leading this group. And I'm I'm the youngest here. I'm only 24 and all of this. By the time it's all said and done in 25 years, I'm going to be the greatest. Um, he fat shamed Chris Jericho. Um, <laughs> called himself the real Judas. Obviously, Chris Jericho's theme music is Judas, and um, in the end, said, Yeah, to Chris Jericho, I'm better than you, and you know it, which is his catchphrase, which he hasn't been saying whilst he was in the inner circle. So, um, yeah, them they're they're looking very good, um, with that whole group situation. Brilliant, good um, stuff. Yeah, I think much have- needed, a much needed, much needed lift as well. And, yeah, and I'm um, excited to see the, the beef between them and um, uh, the what's, inner what's circle. The inner circle, oh my god, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that, to see yeah. That. that's gonna be good whenever we get it. Um, we had a big, like, I think it was five on five match Jurassic Express and Beer Country versus Matt Hardy, Private Party, Butcher and Blade. Um, Matt Hardy basically won the match. He's been doing what he has been doing. He lets everyone do the hard work and then tags them in, tags them away, <laughs> twists the fate and puts them away. So, so um, that's how that match ended up. Um, we saw Miro, interest... was, Miro, was Miro in this program? He wasn't. He wasn't in this program. So we saw Miro have a backstage. Um, interview where he was just training he said i'm training for the world title he hasn't got any more time for best friends and all of that kind of stuff and kip sabian said you know he came out and said i'm not done with best friends they ruined my wedding miro you indirectly ruined my wedding when you pushed so and so into my wife so miro said look i don't give a crap about all of this stuff i'm chasing the world title <laughs> um but yeah said, i want to see i want to see miro versus kenny i, I want to see them yeah he needs yeah. to start taking things more seriously so yeah. Yeah, he he basically made his intentions clear, at least for the fans, because that's what we all want to hear. But it looks like they are going to probably have this one last match, and I'm expecting some tension. Something's going to kick off between Kip Sabian and and Miro. Um, yeah, then we had um, Sting come out for an interview, which never really happened. Darby Allen then came out and said he was going to challenge. He was going to start um, defending the TNT Championship more, um, and he's going to start. I think he said something about he's going to start with the best ever TNT champion. And there was this really kind of divide. So half of the crowd are shouting Cody and like maybe half of the crowd are shouting Brody. But obviously it sounds very similar. But Mm. he was referring to Brody because he's offered up an open challenge to anyone in the Dark Order to come and challenge him for the TNT championship. Um, We saw Team Taz come out and Brian Cage said... He took the mic from Taz and said, I'm not letting you speak for me no more. He went up to Sting and said, um, you know, contrary to all the beef we've been having, basically, that I respect you. You put on a hell of a match at Revolution. And Taz and the whole of Team Taz are like, what are you doing? Like paying this guy respects. And he, Cage wasn't listening to them anymore. Brian Cage walked out on them. So it looks like maybe he might be um, leaving, teasing, leaving Team Taz. Okay. Which would be pretty interesting. To see a bit premature happens. in my opinion, but okay. Oh, definitely. You know what the thing is? Like when they put Will Hobbs in there, I thought him and Will Hobbs are kind of going after the same position as the you know the big man of the group. So and that's what it is. That, that's yeah, probably the why they moved, that's why they're removing him. It's probably to, yeah, to build yeah. him Hobbs. And to be fair, he doesn't speak. He doesn't really speak. Ricky Starks is the only other person than Taz that speaks. Um, so they they might they may as well try something else with him, to be honest. Um we saw Eddie Kingston and Moxley team up to go up against the Good Brothers. Um, obviously, this was following the the shenanigans of the death of the, the death match, um, <laughs> getting some type of revenge. Um, I'm trying to remember who won this one. You remember? No, I didn't see this. What uh, Kingston and Moxley? Yeah, I think I think Kingston and Moxley won. I guess uh, I guess Gallows and Anderson. Revenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think Moxley and Kings, Kingston won. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I think they did. I just can't remember yeah. the finish. Um, but yeah, I, and then after the match, and Kenny Omega came out and they all tried to attack uh, Moxley. The Young Bucks came out and saved Moxley and Kenny Omega was trying to force the Young Bucks into doing the whole two sweet, all of them, but Young Bucks walked away from the scenario. So mm-hmm. they're not in, they're not going for all of that stuff. Um, Ray Phoenix versus Angelico. Um, 
good match, good high flying match, but didn't get anywhere near the kind of time that um, you know these guys would deserve with a match that these caliber guys can probably put together. Yeah. Um, Ray Phoenix got the win, um, which continues the kind of hot streak he has been on for quite a while. Let's talk, about the main event. Let's talk about the main, the main event. event, man. Um, un un unsanctioned lights out match Thunder Rosa versus Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Um, I've never seen a women's match so violent. Um, <laughs> so good, so good, but very violent. We saw all kinds of spots. Um, very early on, Reba, um, who is Dr. Baker's number two, hit Thunder Rosa mm -hmm. with crutches. Um, we saw chairs get involved. We saw a superplex onto a pile of chairs. We saw, um, I think Reba got put through a table. There were loads of tables at ringside. Thunder Rosa got busted open early. Um, then Thunder uh, Britt Baker got busted open. She fell on a ladder. Um, we saw like a Death Valley driver from Thunder Rosa to Britt Baker. An incredible on, on, Death Valley driver. In <laughs> onto a ladder Britt Baker then fought her way back into the match got um the thumb thumbtacks out spread them out all over the ring um she got a, a, like the power bomb in that she received to the thumbtacks like usually yeah. I see like people land on it it still obviously goes into them but it's like it doesn't seem so impactful like when yeah. she landed like her whole back was full of thumbtacks like absolutely yeah. crazy um and then I think she was put, she put Thunder Rosa in her, um, I can't remember what her finisher is. Um, it's like a, some type of lock, kind of like a yes lock. She puts it in, she puts yeah. it in Thunder Rosa, who's lying in the thumbtacks. Like, a, um, it's like a, um, uh, not Crippler Cross it. Space. What's the Malenko one, Justin? What was the name of the Malenko? Texas uh, Coverleaf. Uh, Texas, Texas, Texas Coverleaf, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Texas Coverleaf, yeah. That's what Malenko used to do. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. And then um, Thunder Rosa gets the win by power driving her through a table at, ri at ringside um, from the apron through the table, pinned her because it was an unsanctioned match, pinned her outside the ring. Um, yeah, brilliant. Honestly, <laughs> brilliant, brilliant match. I've never seen anything like this for women. So I'll This is very, very needed for AEW because, you know, Max, I've been saying this for a long time. I said AEW is not really doing well in the women's department. They're, mm. not really, they're not really booking their women talents great, in my opinion. But they have started to turn that tie with Jade, Jade Cargill. Definitely. And 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 now with this match with uh, Britt Baker. But I mean, Britt Baker is one of my favorites in AEW. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's an amazing talent. And um, Do you know the yeah. thing, though? Like... This, this particular feud has been going on for a very long time. Yes, it has. Britt Baker, they've been building Britt Baker since maybe about this... Sorry, not Britt Baker. Jade Cargill, they've been building her since maybe about November, December. Um, doing, And we saw the Women's Tournament tournament, tournament recently, and that's, was, that was really good. But everything that has been good in the recent months hasn't involved the champion. Hikaru yeah. Shida is still champion. Hikaru, Hikaru Shida had a great match at Revolution, but like it's, she's only give, delivering a great match when she's called upon, and she has no story other than this. Like she wasn't yeah. even on this show. They pictured her backstage after the show mm -hmm. in Gorilla hugging Thunder Rosa, mm -hmm. but they have nothing I, for the champion. Like, it's crazy. I, I think what they're trying to focus on is building stars in the women's division, mm -hmm. and, and you know you have the champion there. But they want to build stars and make people even more invested in other wrestlers. And then when it comes to time for them to challenge for the title, there's a bit more interest. I feel that's what they want to do. They want to kind of yeah. build a bit more stars. But, but they're not, I, I get that, but they're not even like featuring the champion. Like, you know, in WWE, if someone's not going to be on TV, they might get a yeah. like, backstage watching the screen, watching what's going on in the ring. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. in their heads to one side and that. Yeah, not even that. Yeah, that's true. They just showed Jade. Jade was in the crowd in the women's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. big smile. Her, <laughs> big and smile. her legs kicked up and everything. Like. Yeah, yeah, legs kicked up, chilling. Like they could have put the women's champion next to her. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, you're right. You're right. But it's, it's um, Justin, um, yeah, very good move on AEW's end to make this the main event. Yeah, absolutely, because it, it gives focus to obviously the casual fan. Um, and for a match of that caliber, for a lights out match of that caliber, like you, you, you don't usually see that type of match on TV anywhere. You're gonna mm. have to start digging through the archives to watch that type of match. Mm. So to see two women do that type of match and do it to such great effect, will obviously, as you said, build up the foundations of Van der Rosa build up the foundations of the AEW women's division as a whole and obviously make sure that, you know, 
next time you see either of those two competitors, i.e. Britt Baker, i.e. Van der Rosa, and my light's just gone out. Give me a sec. There we go. Um, it's yeah, going to be pain. <laughs> in, reg <laughs> in, regards to, um, in regards to obviously from the Rosa and Britt Baker, the next time you know Mr. Casual switches on the TV on TNT and sees, oh, look, it's that woman that had that really good match where you know she, you know, got busted wide open, got put mm. through a table, got put through a ladder. Oh, I'm gonna watch her again. So, as you guys said, it's just building the foundations to make sure that you know we 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 watch women as equals in the wrestling ring you know um coming from somebody who's had an intergender match himself with two women and got beat by a woman i, I love you know. that match by the way I, I, I love that match bro that match is incredible that match is incredible you were taking some serious bumps bro i took, I I like, took some licks that match i, like, I took some licks himself, bro. i took some licks like <laughs> in bro. in training i was kind of known as like mick foley and it's not because i'm like you know 280 pounds it's because of the the bumps that i took but yeah going back on the subject you know Women are, are, are equals in the ring. And at the end of the day, nobody should look down on them and think, oh, they can't do what they men do because they can and they mm -hmm. can do it to, you know, great effect, um, as was, was shown yesterday night on Dynamite. So, yeah, no, in regards to putting that at the main event, absolutely. I'm 100% I'm for that, man. Well, I've got a skillet random question for the both of you. If there was two women that are not being utilised, by the way, so these are not women who are the mainstay or, or in the main events or in regular WWE programming. Two women that are not being used in WWE that you would pluck and put onto AEW women's division. Who would they be? Let's go with Mex first. Two women who are not being used in WWE, in your opinion, that could get moved to AEW and thrive there. Who do you think that is? There's probably a better answer, but my gut said Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. I like that. I like because that. Mm. I think their gimmick, just their tomfoolery, it just fits everything about AEW and especially mm. being the elite. Um, Peyton Royce is a very good wrestler. Um, her husband's over there. Um, true. It just makes sense. Very true. I like that answer. J Justin? Um, I'm going to have to pick one that I think is semi-retired at the moment, Lita. Okay. Um, and the other one would be Ember Moon. Yeah. Um, in regards to Lita, I think she, she's got a lot of unfinished business with the wrestling profession. And I think given the right contract and given the right amount of dates, again, she, was, she really flourished in the ring, especially from when she joined in like 2000 with the WWF at the time with S.A. Rios. Um, and I think she's got like that mainstream appeal even to this day. Mm -hmm. To say to people, look, I'm here. I'm I'm still around. I can do what I can do. Um, in regards to Emma Moon, I think she's so underutilized. It's unreal. Um, again, she has a very unique look to her. She can wrestle. She can wrestle to a very high standard. And I think that she isn't really used. You know how I'd envision somebody like her to be used. Um, and again, it's just like. Again, with especially with Lita, it's all about the name brand, the name value of Lita and what she stood for back in the day before she, she left the WWE. And I think if you pick those two, you know, the, the women's division would have like a real face to yeah. it. And I'm not saying that anybody else in that division at the moment isn't like a, a brand, but I'm saying in regards to somebody like Lita, you put Lita on a poster again, Mr. Joe Casual will look at it and say, Damn, Lita's in AEW. I'm gonna have that, to watch. That that's a very good point because you know, we see them utilizing the likes of the Christian Sting, uh, Jake the Snake, and you know, for the men and the helping the men's development. Maybe, you know, they brought in Vicky Guerrero maybe for that kind of role, but I guess she's not an in-ring competitor, so maybe it doesn't quite resonate. But they could definitely do with an older head, like you're saying, like mm. like Lita to to kind of help coach as well. Well, I'm. I would personally love to see Zelina Vega in AEW. I mean, she's not, she's not WWE now. Obviously, she's not in contract with WWE. She's doing her own thing on Twitch. But I hope she goes to AEW. And um, I would say the ones that are active. I wrote down Nikki Cross. 
I think oh, yeah. doesn't get used at all. And <laughs> um, Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan. I think yeah. I think they would do really well in AEW. So I think, yeah, I think those are my shouts, personally. But Justin, yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah, no. Sorry, yeah, quick, quick fact. And we were speaking about Thunder Rosa when they mm -hmm. throw this in. Um, obviously, after her first AEW match and Eddie Kingston, their, his first AEW match before he was signed by them, that WWE offered both of them positions, but not as wrestlers. Offered Eddie Kingston a job coaching in NXT and offered um, Thunder Rosa a job as an NXT referee. This is raw. Bad. That's how they see you, man. And that's why that's Crazy. why sometimes sometimes this is why I love about I think wrestling does teach me a lot about myself as well. Because you look at people who are where you follow somebody for a amount of time and you see them for what they can really do, and then they get told by people who have the money, you know, maybe you be better suited to this, you'd be better suited to that. Just follow your gut, man. Because I think a lot of wrestlers they prove that example time and time again. You know, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go with this company and I'm gonna show you what I'm made of. And then three years later, you're gonna hire me for what I should have been hired for, for in the first in place. The first place. Mm -hmm. but you know, you know what's what's good as well. This is why competition is good because having if there was no AEW, they may take take those roles. Yeah, definitely they, they just take oh, the roles, you know so yeah 100%. It, competition that's has allowed them to go somewhere else and look what they're doing flourishing thunder rosa still doesn't actually work for aew she's not contracted she's still contracted by the nwa she's, she's know, like the it's... most featured woman in in the division like it's crazy How amazing is that it's amazing justin thank you so much for joining us tonight we're definitely going to get you back on and um thank you just please give people give people your 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 socials where they can find you where can they follow you? Yeah, most definitely. Um, I believe uh, my Twitter is JPR for Life. Um, my Instagram is JPR underscore four underscore Life. Um, and yeah, that's that's my that's my socials in a nutshell. But yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure to be on the show, and thank you very much for inviting me. It's been a long time. Oh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a long say, time yeah. coming, bro. Long time coming. Sorry, Max, what you're saying. I just have to say, I first um, found out about JPR um, watching Rest Things, a big up Rest Things, um, your interview with Del Boy a matter of months yeah. ago, and I searched out some of your stuff from there. And from the some of the clips I found, some of the stuff Del Boy put me on, I said, I'm waiting to see this. When Once this <laughs> pandemic stuff is lifted, I need to see you in the flesh, bro. So it's been great to speak Thank to you, you on, on this podcast. Mex and I Thank are gonna you. be there. We're gonna be there front row, bro. Chain you on with JPR sign. Thank Thanks. you very much. No, you're welcome. Um, Thank you so much. Max, anything you're very before... welcome. And Max, anything before we sign out, Max? Um, no. Um, follow the Kick Out podcast, guys, on all social platforms. Where are we back on Monday? Fast lane. We're back on Monday for a fast lane review. We might have a special guest. I won't announce that yet, but um, yeah, hopefully we have a special guest on Monday. So um, thanks again, Justin, and um, we are out. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.